Always good to check in with our royal friend, uh, and she's of course regal in many ways, but certainly her uh, connections to the royal family are well and truly worth talking about. Here, the lady who literally wrote the book about uh, Camilla's written one about Harry, and of course spends plenty of time with us, the lovely Angela Levin. Now, uh, we. We know that the Invictus Games is, in my view, probably the best thing that Harry has done in public life, giving an opportunity for uh, people who had been wounded in service to be able to come together, have fellowship and obviously compete in a sporting competition. But being 2023, it ain't about Harry anymore. We've got to talk about Megan. Is it true that she's going to be turning up and not just turning up and cheering them on? She's going to pick up a microphone and tell them how to deal with their problems. Yes, that's right. I mean, I'm furious that she's going because I agree with you completely. This is what Harry is really proud of. And for a you know rare chance nowadays, usually behind Meghan like a servant, that he could actually stand in the spotlight and take a bit of joy himself. But she's coming and she's going to talk to the... Um, there's 500 people taking part plus their family. And she's going to talk to these 500 people and, um, about courage and resilience, right? Now, it's, um, it's ironic and would be funny if it wasn't so tragic. She's not courageous. She's got no relig re religious, I nearly said, resilience. She walks around showing us this little round thing that she had on her arm the other day. And this is to calm her and to help her, you know, be comfortable with herself. Um, I think she's obviously promoting it for some sort of organization, but you know, she still wants this victim image. And if you want a victim image, what on earth are you doing? Telling soldiers who've been wounded physically or psychologically, um, as if you are telling them what to do. I mean, it'll probably be a lecture. They'll probably talk a lot about herself. But who wants that? No one, zero. I think because she's kept out of everything that Prince Harry's been doing, you know, when he was promoting Spare, his biography, when he was um, going to court about accusing newspapers and the royal family for, well, Buckingham Palace, it was called, for cheating on him with his phones and also um, the coronation. She was nowhere to be seen just when he needed somebody there for him. He needed his wife there because it was very, very difficult for him. Um, she's not there, she scurried off, but now she knows this is glorious and it's supposed to be a very good one. They've even got a few more countries taking part. Nope, she's got to be there and they'll hold hands and it looked phony beyond phony. And that's not what it's all about. But also Angela, what strikes me here is that this is exactly the way that Megan loves to have her communication. One way. She has the microphone, she has the power, she talks to them. But again, what is her expertise? What is the toughest thing that she's been through her life? Remember they tried to pretend that they were in some sort of a near-death experience being followed by the paparazzi. They were filming it, but then never released it because there's no evidence of it being near death. These are people that have literally f uh, faced death in the battlefield, and she's got the cojones, being polite here because it's Angela, uh, she's, she's got the, the stones to think that she's got something to tell them. They have something to tell her. She should be giving them the microphone and sitting there and listening to 500 people, not talking to them. Yes, quite right. You see, but she won't listen to anybody she knows. She thinks globally. She thinks she's a wonderful woman who knows everything. And Harry agrees with her. It's all very well to, to love somebody, but you shouldn't be so um, servant-like towards them and listen to everything they say and do what you said. The other thing she's doing, which is interesting, is the hotels they're staying at, she's ordered a special type of linen for bed sheets and she wants the rooms decorated in a certain way. Yeah. And she's insisted on all the meals to be sent to her detailed and she's correcting them if she doesn't want them. You know, she makes everything so difficult. She has to be super grand when really she's a nobody. She's just hanging on to the tales of Harry just to have a title. But the other day, um, what, two days ago, it was sort of, passed around that she now no longer wants to be attached to what happened in her past, i.e. at Buckingham Palace. She wants to be um, talked to just for herself, 
She wants all that to be forgotten. And Harry now likes to want to be called just Harry. He doesn't want to use his title. Yet they went through hell to get the children to be named the prince and princess. And she, they're not, if they don't want that, get rid of your titles and everybody will be very happy. But we have this hypocrisy that just keeps going on and on and on that's absolutely ridiculous. And I wonder whether these new wacko PR people who are looking after her, top of the line, um, and they just let something go. So there's then a big response and then you can unravel it and it doesn't exist anymore. So you've got three items or three stages out of one point. I can't see any other reason why they had the audacity to do something like that. I mean, you know, after all they're fighting for it, they cling on to their titles as if they're on rocks and they've got to stay there and they take no notice.